So a long time ago, I made a video about Lizzie McGuire, one of my favorite shows back when I was growing up. Well, I say growing up as if I'm not still like mentally 12, but Lizzie McGuire went on for only like two seasons, which I just completely forgot about. And back in 2003, there was the final Lizzie anything, which had the very clever title of the Lizzie McGuire movie. Now this movie's kind of special because it was the first ever theatrical movie released based on a Disney Channel thing. Like after this, you know, there was High School Musical 3 and Hannah Montana movie and stuff. But back in 2003, man, I tell you what, they were just banking everything on Hilary Duff. And so I figured why not go all the way back to yesteryear and see how the movie holds up. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Honey. I'm sure you all know what Honey is by now, but just in case you somehow haven't heard like literally every other YouTuber talk about them, Honey is an online shopping tool that searches and scours the internet for promo codes to help you save money on things you're already gonna buy anyway. I mean, seriously, Honey works with tons of websites, more than I could possibly ever count with my shoes still on, and they help you save money on almost anything you could really want. You gonna order some pizza? Boom, look at that, you could have saved some money. Oh, you want some makeup? Well, whiz, 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 look at that, what's going on there? You looking for something to help deal with your girlfriend's ex who can't take a hit and won't leave her alone? Honey's got your back. To get Honey, it's extremely simple, okay? You just go to joinhoney.com slash Alex Myers, click on the little button here, and then wham, bam, bibber da bow, ready to go. They even aggregate all the biggest deals from tons of other stores as well, so you know what's on sale, when it's on sale. And just in case Honey can't find any promo codes for the thing you're buying, they give you free Honey Gold whenever you purchase stuff while using Honey. That's it, it's that simple. So either you're saving money via promo codes or you're getting Honey Gold you can redeem for money later on anyway. So either way, you win. Again, just go to joinhoney.com slash Alex Myers, click the button to get Honey today and start saving some money. Okay, back to the show. So the movie starts right off with Matt, Lazy's little brother, trying to get some footage to blackmail his sister with, for what reason I can only begin to imagine. <laughs> toy and say hello to Matt owning his big sister for eternity. We then get the world's longest intro montage of Lizzie singing into her hairbrush. <laughs> How embarrassing. I mean, I would never be caught dead doing something like that. When I was 13, I definitely did not sit in my room for hours at a time inventing my own anime story arc of me somehow rescuing Jenna from English Lit class, and then she'd be like, Wow, you're so cool and handsome, and it's actually really attractive how you found all the bananas in Donkey Kong 64. How did it take me so long to realize that you're the guy I've really been looking for this whole time? Yep, never, never did that. That would be weird. But like the unspoken gigantic elephant in the room with this whole scene is that Lizzie changes her outfit like three or four times and Matt's filming the entire thing and it's just played off like a teehee what a silly brother prank. And excuse me? This is like the most messed up thing I've ever seen in a kid's movie. Anyway, so after getting all the footage he needs for what exactly? It's time for Lizzie's middle school graduation and her mom's giving her all the usual sappy emotional mom speeches, you know, like they always do. I mean, yesterday you were in diapers and now you're graduating junior high, you're growing up and I can't believe you're going to Rome for two weeks all by yourself without me. Wait, these kids are going to Rome for two weeks? For a middle school graduation? When I graduated middle school, I just spent the whole summer watching Toonami and trying to figure out how to get around the internet parental controls. Without me with you there, you there without me. Mom, I think that's about all the combinations of those words you can make. Lizzie, this is a big day for you, sweetheart. Ugh, he's going to quote a dead guy. <laughs> As William Shakespeare once wrote, uh, uh, Virginity breeds mites, much like cheese. Follow your dreams, Lizzie. Anyway, so after getting all the wonderful life advice that parents love to give that makes like no sense, she meets up with my man Gordo. I tell you what, I used to think this guy was so cool back when I was in like seventh grade or whatever. I mean like, come on, the dude wears long sleeve shirts under short sleeve shirts and still got to hang out with two cute girls all the time. Absolute legend. So, do I look okay? Lizzie, I'm your guy best friend. You should really talk to Miranda about this stuff. But she's in Mexico City. Wait, why would she be in Mexico City on her own graduation day? So, a fun fact, the actor who plays Miranda actually left the show in the middle of the second season so she could film another Disney Channel movie. <laughs> How does that even make sense? But anyway, so while Lizzie's talking to Gordo, of course Kate just has to show up and ruin everything. Oh. My. God. <laughs> Only you would think that you could hide that powder blue, puffy sleeved, it's kind of a peasant dress, but it might just be a baggy disaster of questionable fiber content that you wore to the spring dance. I just <laughs> Lizzie McGuire, you are an outfit repeater. You know, I don't know if there's such a thing anymore, but like back when I was in school, I always thought it was weird how there were all these like unwritten rules that girls had for each other for like no reason. Huh, you know, Jessica's looking pretty cute. <laughs> Jessica? She wore the same outfit literally twice in one year. Her thighs touch, and she doesn't even use the right eyeshadow for her skin tone. Okay, I mean, come on, who would ever want a girl like that? Meanwhile, the guy she's trying to impress has like a third grade reading level and starts every conversation with <laughs> basketball. Anyway, so skipping ahead a little bit, graduation's over and Lizzie, Gordo, Kate, and Ethan, who looks old enough to have 
two failed marriages and a mortgage, and the whole class head off to Rome for the middle school graduation trip. But not before we get to meet the new principal that they're gonna have in high school, Miss Ungermeyer. What is that? That is Miss Ungermeyer. If you stay on her good side, it's a one-way ticket to an Ivy League school. And what if you're on her bad side? Excuse me, I need to mop up some puke. Well, do you... You end up as that guy? Oh no, a successful blue-collar job. What could possibly be worse than that? Most of your classmates opted for the 36-hour bus ride to the waterslide wonderland. You, who are not mouth-breathing trailer trash, you. What is up with this movie and just hating poor people? Lizzie not having 365 completely unique outfits? The threat of being a janitor who might live in a trailer? What is your problem, Disney Channel? Anyway, so like I said, they fly off to Rome and they finally arrive. <sighs> You know what, Gordo? I'm not gonna let Kate Sanders get to me. Promise me something. Anything. Promise me that when we're here, we'll find adventures. All right, this is our chance to start over. I mean, do anything that we want to do. Oh, come on, Lizzie, you only have like two weeks, okay? Like, what kind of shenanigans could you possibly get up to in that amount of time? He said to himself, knowing full well that this is a Disney Channel movie and it's all downhill from here. So on their first day in Rome, Lizzie's on the tour with the class, just rocking the most PlayStation 3 looking hair I've ever seen. <laughs> did, did you do this on purpose? And right then, first day in Italy, wouldn't you know, you'll never guess what happens. Okay. Isabella? Fez from That 70s Show. Now, this guy's name is Paolo, and turns out he's a super mega famous singer in Italy. And for some inexplicable reason, he has his sights set on regular old frumpy dumpy Lizzie McGuire. Of all people. I guess because she's like the one woman in the world who has not been swept up by Pete Davidson yet. Huh? Okay. I was pushing for smooth sailing through high school. But this will work. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just... You look an awful lot like a friend of mine. No. No, 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 it's not, it's, is it one of these movies? I'm done, I'm out, I can't do another Princess Switch movie. But yeah, so everyone seems to think she's someone named Isabella, who she kind of sort of might look like, you know, and then this lady gives her like a giant cheese wheel just out of nowhere. <laughs> Me. Except for the hair, you could be her twin. <sighs> Disney Channel movies, why do I do this to myself? So Paolo asks her out and she's like, <laughs> Oh you, come on. I mean, I'm just a girl on a school trip. And besides, with a shirt collar that big, I'm sure you're already swimming in ladies. Lizzie, can I see you again? Maybe tomorrow? I will meet you tomorrow morning at the Trevi Fountain at 9 o'clock. And so later on, Lizzie's talking to Gordo about it, like, Hmm, should I leave this chaperone class trip in a foreign country to hang out with some random hot guy I just met? I mean, it does kind of sound suspicious that he says you happen to look exactly like this other famous person. I mean, what are the odds of- You're right, Gordo. I should just take a chance on love. Nothing bad has ever happened to a girl who follows a random guy she just met. Hey, now, this is what dreams are made of. So the next day, she fakes being sick and sneaks out to meet up with the Italian meatball himself by the fountain, or whatever he said. I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. And when she sees him, she just explodes into this human and sludge monster from Stranger Things Season 3, okay? That's how you know it's true love right there. Uno, due, tre. I, I just, I had them all wish for you to come. So if you haven't seen this movie before, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've already figured out the whole thing anyway, but Lizzie looks exactly like this famous pop star, Isabella. But Paolo and Isabella have broken up, and Isabella is now living on some island somewhere, as one does after a breakup. I mean, you know, some girls cut their hair or dye their hair, or both if things are real bad. So, what are we doing today? Well, my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend, so... Say no more, sister. Well, shoot, what do you know? All my problems have magically been solved. But anyway, so, yeah, Paolo or whatever. Paolo. Sí, Karina. Do you still love her? Who? Isabella? Sí. Of course I still love her. But like a sister. So why'd you break up? It's, um, it's complicated. So they get to 
were talking throughout the day and then a crazy plot twist that no one saw coming. Paolo wants Lizzie to pretend to be Isabella and perform at some concert thing for just one day. It's just one day, you know what I mean? Come on, what could possibly go wrong in a single day, am I right? But now because Isabella's so mad at me, she's refusing to appear. The record company's threatening to sue her if she doesn't show up. And what about you? <laughs> for me is no problem. I write the music. I don't know where it comes from. It just comes from me. La 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 la. See? So I can go solo. <laughs> Lizzie, I'm, I'm begging you. I know he has a really sexy mullet going on here, but like, uh, can you please just find like two brain cells to rub together for half a second and just think about this? But Isabella, she needs the help to sing. Wait, Isabella lip syncs? Please, 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 please. Imagine what would happen to Isabella's career. Oh, that's so sweet. You still care about her. You're definitely broken up, right? See. Okay, so he thinks of Isabella as a sister, and Lizzie looks exactly like her, but Lizzie's hoping he's single so he'll date her. You know, the girl who looks like the girl Paolo thinks of like a sister. What? Between this and Lizzie's brother filming her at the beginning, like, there's some weird subtext going on in this movie. And so, of course, Paolo asks her to pretend to be his sister girlfriend for a day to save his career or something. I don't know, Paolo. I... Don't worry, Karina. I could never ask you to do this crazy thing. No. You know what? If this is gonna help you and Isabella, then I'll do it. Grazie. <laughs> Prego. And so the rest of the movie is pretty much just about how Lizzie's sneaking out to meet up with Paolo, and we get the inevitable makeover montage where they think she's Isabella, and so they give her all the true celebrity experiences like soda, pastries, and an unplugged telephone. Then she has to learn all the words to the song and all the dance steps and everything, all the while being constantly whisked away by this tall, dark glass of marinara sauce who just can't quite seem to figure out how to wear a shirt correctly. And he takes her to all these amazing tourist spots that magically have no people anywhere. How is he just so perfect all the time? He would stare at her in class and she would try to act cool But it was obvious like ooh So beautiful ooh, Yes, you are <laughs> <laughs> and this takes up like half the movie, so I'm just gonna fast forward to you for a second. Uh huh. Mm hmm. <laughs> With two flavors Baby twisted in. Not yet. Experience the art of folding hair with Haragami. Warning, think you've seen it all before? Think again, because now girls go. Nope. Okay, here we go. Now, like I said, Lizzie has to keep sneaking out to do all this stuff, and so her best friend Gordo's been desperately trying to cover for her and make sure that Miss Ungermeyer doesn't figure out what's been going on, but this leads him to having to make the ultimate sacrifice. You know, I bet this whole thing was just a clever ruse to sneak out of this hotel, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. Lizzie's upstairs. It, it's me. I'm the one who's been sneaking out. You should look for your suitcase, Gordon. You're going home. Oh, I pegged you right from the start. You did what to Gordo? Also, I love how she's just been suspicious of everything the whole movie, and Gordo says one thing, and then she's like, aha, yes, I will believe this wholesale, no questions asked. And so, naturally, Gordo is sent home. But when he's at the airport in Italy about to board the plane, you know, because that's what you do at airports, you'll never guess who also happens to be there, and is also a little confused about who this new blonde girl is hanging out with Paolo. Can somebody please tell me what is going on? I can. That's my friend Lizzie McGuire. Yeah. You need crap. I demand for you to tell me wow. everything you know about this Lizzie McGuire. Well, I demand for you to tell me everything there is to know about this, this Paolo Valisari. I left him and all of my thoughts about him on the island. I just want to give a quick shout out here to Hilary Duff's amazing, flawless Italian accent. I left him and all of my thoughts about him on the island. <laughs> <laughs> so this brings us to the end of the movie, the big night that Paolo's been talking about where Lizzie has to pretend to be Isabella and all that. But right when she's about to go on stage, Gordo shows up to fill us all in on what's really been going on the whole time. It's a long story, but- Okay, well I want to hear all about it, but I've got to go get my dress on, okay? Lizzie, listen to me. Paolo is setting you up. Actually, he is setting me up. Freaky, huh? Way freaky. Way, way freaky. This has all been some crazy scheme to set you up and embarrass you on stage so it looks like Isabella can't sing. But Paolo would never do that to me. Yeah, Isabella, I've known him for like three days, okay? So, like, don't even. I'm like 14, so I know a thing or two about love, all right? And so Lizzie gets on stage, and just when Paolo's about to do his evil plan thing to make her look bad, the real Isabella cuts his mic and turns out he's the one who can't sing at all and has just been faking it all this time. And so, of course, he's booed off stage and realizes that no amount of shirt unbuttoning could possibly save him from his true enemy, himself. And then Lizzie sings the rest of the song and becomes an international pop star because turns out the real music was confidence. <laughs> and then at the very end of the movie, Lizzie and Gordo go up on the roof one more time to share a moment. Gordo? 
Come on. Oh, wait, that's it? It's over? Well, thanks for nothing, Lizzie. And that's pretty much where the movie ends. I will say, though, to be fair, all in all, this movie's actually a lot more watchable than I thought it was going to be. Like, based on the premise and also the fact that it's a 2003, not quite, but also kind of sort of Disney Channel movie, like, I assumed it was just going to be pure cringe. But, you know, I mean, there's actually a lot worse movies out there you could watch. Like Spy Kids 2, for example. How is this even a real movie? Who greenlit this? A fair bit ago, Kelsey and I sat down and we watched a whole bunch of like early 2000s classic movies. We watched like Cinderella Story and Freaky Friday and She's the Man and just a whole bunch of stuff. And I've said this before, but it really does ring true. The early 2000s just really had, I don't know, it, it was like this golden age of like teen rom-com, teen drama stuff that was actually like kind of good. Like around this time, I guess like Buffy was kind of around the same time. I think that started in 1998, but still that was going around the same time. Something happened in like the 2000 teens up to today where it's like teen stuff just became like really dumb. I can't even really describe exactly what it is. Like I need to really sit down and think it out. But it's like, if you go back and watch these older movies, your Princess Diaries and your Freaky Fridays and your whatevers, they were so much more watchable than a lot of what I see nowadays. And like, it's not even like nostalgia. I don't don't think but it's like they're just so much more watchable like I don't know exactly what happened like if this, this new wave of like writers who are like my age like missed the point I don't know but it's like like Lizzie McGuire movie is very silly and very dumb but like I don't know it's actually a lot more watchable than you think like it's, it's not nearly as like cringy and, and dumb as I expected like especially like if you compare it to like more modern day Disney Channel stuff where it's like some of these shows and some of these movies especially are just like so bad they used to be not that bad you know like they, I mean they were not amazing but they were not quite like what you have today. I don't know exactly why that is, but maybe someone smarter than me could put it in the comments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com. Let me know what TV shows or movies you would like me to check out. Uh, I have a podcast with my girlfriend. It's called Doing the Devil's Tango, where uh, sometimes we do dating advice and sometimes we just talk about what shows we're watching, what games we're playing, that kind of thing. And above all, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.